everyday prices for everyday people. To help meet your business and private printing needs successfully, we have just the right products and services at appointed time printing limited. We specialize in digital printing, offset printing, packaging and security printing. Our innovative designs and complete professional touch on our print products such as posters, flyers, brochures, magazines, call cards and any other print solution of your choice ensure that our customers are always happily connected to their audience. With our security printing section, our clients are assured of a highly secured and confidential work process from start to finish. At a point in time, our prices are very, very competitive. Locate us at the OG NTC building near Swansea Shopping Arcade. Contact us on 0501 454165. 0501 454167. Appointed Time Printing Limited. Our printing is the solution. Trasaco Estates. Home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master planned community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Burgers for six. Did you say six? Open the app. Ding dong. Bubble. Your favorite moment. Pass your favorite ice cream. Ding dong. Bubble. Eat it. Go on. Order what you want. We can bring anything you want. Ding dong. Bubble. Order it now. Download the app. Order a global and we will deliver. Ding dong global. Got into the house. Made me put my legs into the shoe. Walked around the compound of the house for about ten minutes. Then he took the shoes from me. Went and washed the shoes and put them in the chop box. I was not the only one. Yes. Yeah. Almost all my mates. Your mates. The first time they wore shoes was at Pembroke. We call him prof. So he was teaching even my class. I was he was one year behind me. The teachers would call him to come and teach my class. So they hailed us, even though we were poor, but we still have um her memories. I have three daughters and I see her in them. Now on the morning team. All the ministers in there, they don't change them, they don't move them. But don't let's turn this into a discussion. Yeah, my Rollins told me that I can go and live on top of a tree. I should move out of that house. So I came and told my wife, she said, look, let's move and go and find some top of the tree to live in. into the house, made me put my legs into the shoe, walked around the compound of the house for about 10 minutes, then he took the shoes from me, went and washed the shoes, and put them in the chop box. I was not the only one. Yes. Yeah. Almost all my yes. mates. Your mates. The first time they wore shoes was at Pembroke. We call him prof. So he was teaching even my class. I was, he was one year behind. Yeah, I mean, the teachers will call him to come and teach my class. So they held us, even though we were poor. But we still have um, her memories. I have three daughters and I see her in them. Now, on the morning, I was <laughs> young, I was 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 They don't change them, they don't move them. But don't let's turn this into a discussion.
Chairman Rawlings told me that I can go and live on the top of a tree. I should move out of that house. So I came and told my wife. She said, look, let's move and go and find some top of the tree to live in. Government is broke, government is broke. The people are spending billions to go inside the government that is broke. Have you ever seen a minister who resigned because government is broke before? Government has no money. Have you ever seen a governor who said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I was elected, I thought the government had money. Now I discover government has no money, I resign. Have you ever seen it? Government has no money, but they are bringing money out at election time. Where is that money coming from? So they are lying. What is happening is that there are two types of wicked people in government. Type one, they eat current money. Any money they find in government, they will eat it. They are wicked about that one. There is type two. Type two, they eat current money and future money. They will say, ah, oh, um, my term will end next year. When I leave, how will I eat money? Let me borrow money now. Um, borrow money of the future and eat it now. Right, you all come back from that break. This is uh, Good Morning Ghana. We are live from our studios here at uh, Metro TV. And uh, let me do this very quick one, and uh, I will come back to This is a very special happy birthday to a great servant of the land, Honorable John Abdullahi Jinapo, Member of Parliament for Yapei Kusogu constituency in the Savannah region, and also a ranking member Mines and Energy Committee. Um, he's been a former minister and uh, he's served Ghana very well. Currently a member of parliament. Honorable from the entire crew here at Metro TV, we say a very special happy birthday to you. Uh, do enjoy your day. And then the second and final one goes to Reverend Mrs. Dura Taki Yaboy, uh, the first lady of Victory Bible Churches International. You are celebrating your birthday as well today. We say a very special happy birthday to you and uh, do enjoy your day as well. Now, let me welcome you back into the studio here. And uh, sitting to my immediate left is my very own uncle. Well, so we, we've done that already. I think um, the pictures of Reverend Mrs. Dura Takia Boy are now uh, showing on the screens. But um, happy birthday to you. Mommy, and uh, enjoy your days on earth. Right, so you all come back from that. Let me now introduce my guest to you. Um, Kwesi Pratt Jr. is a managing editor of the Insight newspaper. Uncle Kwesi, good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, good morning. I hope you're doing very well. Well, as, as well as anybody can do, <laughs> you know, under the circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. And... Uh, we're expecting um, Eric Amwaku Chun, a spokesperson for government. He's promised to be here shortly. And so um, when he comes in, he will join the discussion. So um, we'll begin with the story about uh, Toby Afede. And uh, the Inside Newspaper is reporting on why Toby has rejected the 365,000 escratia as inappropriate. There are other issues that have come up this morning. We have received them. Um, uh, a statement they have issued on a show that was done on Metro TV here uh, by my senior colleague Paul Adumotre and um, there is a statement on that as well but I'll pick this story on the explanations as to why he has rejected the S pressure and we'll go into the details of all of that so it says Tobi Afede the Paramount Chief and the Abobo Mafia of the Asogli has been explaining his intention not to accept over 365,000 as Gracia paid to him for serving on the Council of State between 2017 and 2020. Now, according to him, it is not appropriate to receive the said amount when he was being paid monthly for serving as a Council of State member. Toby Afede's explanation comes after members of the public reacted to news of whether or not he indeed followed through with the supposed refund and the rationale behind it. In a press statement on Monday, the 6th of June, the traditional leader said he did not think that over 365,000 
uh, Ghana City, S. Russia, was made to trap him as was being speculated. Now, quote, while working on my tax returns towards the end of last year, I received tax receipts from the Council of State Secretariat that indicated that some money was paid into my bank account in July 2021 as S. Russia for my four-year work as a member of the Council of State 2017 to 2020. Quote again, I applied for and received a statement from my bankers that confirmed that indeed money was paid into my account. I eventually confirmed from the Council of State Secretariat that the sum of 365,392.67 was paid into my account as just crasher. I did not think the payment was made to trap me as is being speculated. I believe it was paid to everybody who served on the Council of State. However, I thought that extra payment was or that extra payment was inappropriate for a short effectively part-time work for which i received a monthly salary and was entitled to other privileges so i was very uncomfortable with it uh could end still we are explained in his statement the businessman further stated that he explored ways of returning the money which has been in his account since july 2021 which he successfully effected on March for uh, the 4th of March 2022. So this is the explanation that has come from um, Toby about him refunding the money. There has been issues about whether he was supposed to refund it, whether he was not supposed to refund it, and uh, other payments that went to him. Uncle. <coughs> well, to be honest with you, I don't understand those who are generating storms mm -hmm. in calabashes and so on. Mm -hmm. I, I simply can't understand them. Mm -hmm. Legally speaking, this is money that Tobe Afede was entitled to. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he's entitled to. So, for all intents and purposes, this is his own money. And he decides that this money should be made available to the state so that the state can use it to carry out its responsibilities. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with that? Why is this generating a storm? This can only be generating a storm because some people have guilty consciences. You understand? Mm -hmm. Some people know that they'll be expected also to make some you know, demonstration of commitment to the state and so on, mm -hmm. which they are unable to make or they are unwilling to make. And therefore, they want to poo poo this gesture, you know, so that they can raise their, their moral levels. You understand? And that's all that is happening. And I'm sick of it. I'm completely sick of it. <coughs> Tobe has not done anything wrong. <coughs> Indeed, <coughs> if we have to react to what he has done, mm. it has to be pouring of commendation. You know, I mean, at this critical time in a national development effort, mm. when the state is in financial crisis and so on, such gestures from citizens are most welcome. And I think that the Tobi deserves mm. serious commendation rather than this infantile noises, you know, of condemnation, of trying to cast doubt over what he has done and so on. So that's one leg mm -hmm. of the story. Mm. Now, the other leg of the story is simply whether or not we should continue to be paying S. Gracia exactly. to some public officials. Mm. And I think we shouldn't. We you shouldn't. Understand? We shouldn't. Now, if you take members of parliament, for example, members of parliament can't go to parliament after their retiring age. And indeed, there's evidence that some of the people who have gone to parliament have already been paid their S. Gracia awards. You know, they've been paid their retirement benefits mm. and so on already. Mm. 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 Some of them are on different pension schemes and they are being looked after in their, in, their, in their old age by the state and so on. Now, they go to parliament for four years. And after the four years, they are entitled to what, to all intents and purposes, would be another pension scheme. Mm. So they are collecting double. Mm. Now, if they go to Parliament for another term, then they collect another one and so on. <coughs> Every four years. Every four years. I don't think that this is, this is reasonable, especially in a country 
where wages and salaries are so very low. I mean, you are living in a country where some people take less than 500 cities a month, you know, to look after themselves and mm. their families, mm. to pay their rent, mm. to pay their transportation, to mm. work, and mm. so on. Mm. Nothing can justify a situation in which public officials who voluntarily uh, put themselves up for national service and so on can be collecting these huge amounts of, of, of money mm. when the vast majority of our people mm. are dying from poverty, are dying from starvation mm. and, and so on. Mm. It simply doesn't make sense. So I would think in all honesty in, and in all sincerity that if anything at all, to be a it deserves commendation, you know, for what action he has taken. Mm. And uh, I am really worried and appalled by those who are attempting, you know, to, to denigrate what he has done and so on. Look, this gesture does not make to be a fede aso, an angel. He may not be an angel. You understand? There may be some other things for which we may feel uncomfortable about and so on. But this particular action is a commendable action. And I think that he deserves the commendation of, 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 of all of us, you know, as citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. 390 something thousand is no small money. And he decides to forgo it in the national interest. He decides to forgo it to make a point about public service you know, and, and commitment of public officials, you know, to, to the pledges that they make to us. I, I'm impressed by Tobey Afedi also. He actually goes, to, goes on to make the point of uh, uh, what you're saying. He says, I want to add in, in the letter that explains his point. I want to add that my rejection of the payment was consistent with my general abhorrence of the payment of huge S. Gracia and other outrageous benefits to people who have, by their own volition, offered to serve our poor country. So that's a statement, and that's a sixth principle. I think what we should do mm -hmm. is to institute a rational pension scheme mm. for everybody, mm. parliamentarians, ministers, whoever, mm. you understand, so that when they retire, when they are no longer able to perform their public functions and so on, mm -hmm. they can look after themselves, they can pay their medical bills, they can pay their rent, mm -hmm. you know. If they still have children in school, they can pay their school fees and so on. Mm -hmm. But that goes for every citizen. Mm -hmm. Every citizen is entitled to have some kind of a pension scheme. So there should be a universal pension scheme for everybody, including Article 71 office holders. And then this matter is resolved nicely without any problems. And there is a, also the issue which you have spoken about already, about um, every four years, where, for example, members of parliament who have taken, somebody has been in parliament for 20 years, and has taken this after every four years, and still comes back to parliament, and still comes to take it. Exactly. So it is not an end of service benefit, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to parliament for four years, you are re-elected for another four years, mm -hmm. and then you are re-elected for another four mm -hmm. years. So clearly, this is not an end of service mm -hmm. benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not an end of service benefit at all. And, and I think that I agree with Togwe Afedi so that uh, we need to do something about this scheme and have a universal pension scheme which is available to all citizens of Ghana irrespective of their ranking in society. Mm. Right, thank you very much. Uh, let me now introduce that um, Eric Amwakutum, um, government spokesperson, has just joined us. And uh, let me welcome you, Eric. Good morning to you. Thank you very much. For Good morning, Kwesi. I haven't seen you for a while. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been My a while. My apologies, I got stuck. In traffic. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Which that's is it. very uh, uncharacteristic. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You you've been in for, for a while, though, but... Um, what we are looking at is um, Toby Afede's rejection of the 365,000 uh, ex Russia, which he labels as inappropriate and has refunded back to the state coffers. There's been issues here and there about whether he should have kept it or returned it and other loans that he may have taken during the period and so on and so forth. And so um, Uncle Kusi thinks that 
there should be a universal pension scheme that fits everybody, not the very few or the privileged few who get to very high positions. Uh, uh, for example, members of parliament who come back every four years and come and fight for extra share. Well, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Uncle good morning. Mm. Good morning sir. And uh, good morning to all the viewers of uh, Metro this morning. Mm. Well, I mean, I think that anything that sparks a conversation or a debate about uh, things that are either found in our constitution or public policy decisions is something that I welcome. I think that what has happened over the last few days is a certain uh, stimulation of a debate mm -hmm. about Article 71 holders and other public officials and what uh, benefits are supposed to accrue to them during their tenure and then even after they, they, they exit. And what this has, happened, uh, has done is to basically uh, do just that. So really, in terms of um, how significant that is, um, it's, it's one of those things that I'm sure would, would uh, engender that conversation going forward. I mean, once you start having a debate about what other public sector workers um, enjoy, or if it's fair for someone to go to parliament, for example, and after the tenor, um is given an ex gratia and they're supposed to, uh, once they go back into parliament and mm. all of those are things that I'm sure that we can have a conversation about. Mm. Then, if anybody calls for a certain rationalization when it comes to um, pensions and uh, end of service benefits and all of those things, those are things that I would also welcome. Um, and I don't think that we need to get into the whole debate about if really uh, the attempt by, or basically for him to refund the money is either hinged on populism or whatever. I think that it's based on his own convictions and we need to give him that particular uh, benefit of the doubt. Mm. But the reality is that a lot of Ghanaians would or have expressed some kind of disquiet about S. Gratia and, and, and all of public sector wages when it comes to uh, people of a certain uh, uh, caliber. And so, yes, uh, it might look like it's, it's something that uh, we would have to relook really at over as we go along. Uh, but I, I honestly don't feel that it's a big deal that we need to really uh, spend too much time on. The reality on the ground is that once you start this conversation, then it can engender uh, policy decisions going forward that would require some uh, change even when it comes to the constitution and what it's uh, supposed to do when people exit, uh, especially Article 71 holders. Right. So um, there, there's been the issue of, uh, as you say, people thinking whether it was right or not. And there, there, there is this clarification I need to Mick, and uh, this is coming in from his office this morning and uh, from my producer, so I have to be able to read, read it for viewers. So um, a show had gone on here by my senior colleague, Paul Adumbochi, um, on the same issues that we are discussing, whether uh, it was right for him to receive or send back the money or refund the money and um, other things or other monies that uh, he may have received, car loans, for example, during his tenure and his attendance during his tenure as a member of the um, Council of State. So this is coming in from his office. It says, our attention has been drawn to comments and allegations made by one Paul Adumotri in his Good Evening Ghana program on Metro TV on the 7th of June 2022 during his discussion of Toby Afeda's rejection of S. Uh, payment made to him. We ordinarily would not respond to comments from Paul Adumotri knowing who he is. But while we ponder a more suitable reaction, specific allegations he made cannot be ignored. Number one, the numbers Paul Adumotri presented on Tobu Afede's attendance at meetings of the Council of State are both incorrect and misleading and are 
a disingenuous attempt to discredit Toby's performance at the council. We challenge him to provide the council's attendance register from which he compiled his uh, numbers for all to know the truth. The council had three committees, one of which Toby chaired, the Economy and Special Development Initiatives Committee, and Toby had an excellent plenary meeting attendance record. Two, Toby did not take a loan from government. SG Bank offered commercial loans to council, of, uh, to council members, which Toby has fully repaid. Three, Toby presented himself as a resident of Accra and did not claim any transport allowances from the council. Four, Toby did not say the S. Grasha payments were illegal. He believes part-time work by our senior citizens should not merit ex crusher payments by our poor country. Five, finally, Toby's rejection of ex Russia payment is not a partisan political matter. Signed, Stephen Tete, Secretary, Astogli State Council. So that's coming in from the, the Secretariat of the Astogli State this morning. Well, I mean, my orientation is not to uh, naturally read meanings into actions of persons and I mean if you're talking about someone like uh, Togwe Afrede I think that uh, in terms of uh, this country he served the country in being an illustrious son of, of, of the country and the land and so you would always have to give people like that the benefit of the doubt mm. you, you understand what I'm saying I'm saying that the reality is that he believes that there's a certain if for want of a better word immoral but not illegal yes you, you understand yes. and well, so mm. um, that is his personal conviction but mm. you can't use personal convictions to uh, deal with public policy issues and legal issues mm. what tends to happen is that once this thing has sparked a certain debate then what would happen is that if really there's a certain um, groundswell of either disquiet or people asking for us to rationalize mm. these as gratia and um, end of service benefits and all of those things then so be it and that's the whole point of a country that is governed by democratic tenants mm. you, you understand where I'm coming mm. from so to be honest with you I think that we tend to overstretch some of these issues he has stated categorically that it's a personal uh, conviction for him. And I, as far as I'm concerned, let's leave it as it is. Right. Okay, so, um, Uncle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On that simple. Yeah, I think it's, it's quite clear. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what Toby Afedia so wants to do. He has not broken the law. He's made resources available to the state of Ghana mm. uh, to take care of, mm. of some of the burning needs of the society and mm. so on. Um, he's also raised moral issues mm -hmm. about S. Gracia, moral, administrative, and technical issues about S. Gracia. And I think that these matters should be considered. Mm. You know, this, are not the first, this is not the first time that these issues are being raised. These mm. issues have been raised over and over and over again. Mm. For example, the situation in which you get Parliament to approve S. Gracia for the presidency, and then the presidency approves as Gracia for parliament. This, this is clearly an untenable situation. Mm. You know, you scratch my back, I scratch <laughs> your back. And this scratching of back <laughs> is being done with the taxpayers' money. Uh, I, th I think it's clearly an untenable and situation. And these are times we have the executive presidency and the parliament agreeing all the time. Yeah. And to the extent that even at one stage, parliament actually agreed that, that the, the spouses of, of presidents mm. and, and their mm -hmm. vice mm -hmm. should be considered mm -hmm. as Article 71 office holders. Mm. I mean, absolutely non sitting And especially within a cultural, you know, cultural situation where um, you could actually have a president with 15 wives. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> stops the president from getting 15 wives or mm -hmm. 28 wives, you understand. Nothing stops the vice president from adding on to his wives to become three and, 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 and so on. You, you understand? So, look, this, this is a problem. Uh, Togbe Afedia so has led the way, and I think that we should begin to have a discussion which is, which is, which is principled mm. 
you know, a discussion which is elevated, mm -hmm. you understand? The mm -hmm. kinds of discussions we are having are petty. They are absolutely petty. I mean, whether Togbe took a car loan or not, what is the import of that? Are public servants not not entitled to take public uh, to to take car loans? Mm. And if indeed he was he was in the public service and he took a car loan, what's the problem with that? Yes, a public servant took a car loan uh, and also took other payments. He mm. decides to he decides to 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 to, to donate mm. some part of his income or, or some part of his entitlement mm. and to keep other part. Mm. Well, what is the big deal about that? Well, what is the big deal about that? Mm. I'm really sick about, you know. I mean, look, we are behaving in ways which, in the near future, will make it difficult for citizens who are not used to this public, you know, discourse and so on, to refuse to serve, to, to serve the nation. Mm -hmm. We are getting to the stage where people will think twice. Mm before they accept government appointments. We are getting to the stage where people are likely to be reluctant to make public comment. And when you get to the stage where people are afraid to make public comment, because anytime they make public comments, you know, Tom Makuts will come after them and so on, we undermine democratic practice. You understand? Yes, everybody is entitled to his view. Toby is entitled to his views. Those criticizing him are entitled to his views. But those criticizing him, what is the purpose? Are they just expressing views? Or they are handing down somebody who they think has become a moral symbol, uh, who has raised the standards so high that, that, that others cannot follow and therefore they have to bring him down? Is that the purpose? If that is the purpose, then it's outrageous. If the purpose is to bring him down uh, to the level of others and so on, it, it, it's, it's clearly outrageous, you know. I'm very, very uncomfortable about all of this, you know, all of this uh, 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 manipulated criticisms of the Tobi. Right. So um, that's it. That's uh, what's happening so far in the response from um, uh, the Secretariat of the Astrogly State this morning. I'll move on now to issues surrounding... Uh, uh, look, let me make one... Other. Right, right. That's fine. I believe absolutely Mm -hmm. yeah, in the Republican status of Ghana. And if you believe absolutely in the Republican status of Ghana, mm -hmm. one of the principles is that of the equality of citizens. You understand? Sovereignty resides in the people of Ghana in equal measure. Mm. So all these things about royalty and so on and so mm. on, it's something that I feel quite wheezy about. Yes. You understand? But that's me. I feel wheezy about that. Mm. Okay. But given that, mm, and with reference to the 1992 Constitution and so on, I think that, look, if we come to the conclusion that chieftaincy will be tolerated and so on, we should tolerate it in equal measure. Some of the things which are being done to Togbe Afedi Aso and being said about him would not be said and done about other chiefs. And that's my worry. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. I mean, some of the people who are castigating him publicly, dragging him into the mud and so on, they dare not do that to other chiefs. What is the reason? Is it because we consider some paramounts inferior to others? Is that the reason? Does it have within it some elements of ethnic bias? I don't know. But these are things that we need to interrogate. You understand? If you decide to respect chieftaincy and so on, if you decide to put chieftaincy on a certain pedestal, which I refuse to do, then please put everybody on the same pedestal. You understand? I don't think that you should have any system, traditional or whatever, mm, of, of which, which, which imposes responsibility, which says that albinos mm. cannot be leaders. Mm. And if you look at our traditional system, in many parts of this country, albinos, simply by the fact of their being albinos, are, 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 are stopped mm. 
from taking up certain leadership positions. Right. You know. Right. I cannot accept a situation in which people cannot take up some leadership positions, especially in the traditional setting, simply because they are women. I cannot accept a situation where people cannot take up leadership responsibility because they are disadvantaged. I mean, for example, in some of the traditional societies and so on, if you have a scar on your skin. Persons with disabilities. A scar. Even a scar, yeah. A scar on your skin. <laughs> you, you, you cannot play a certain leadership role. Mm. Look, we have to grow out of this backwardness and move forward. Ghana is a republic. Mm. And in a republic, one of the cardinal principles is the equality of citizens. And sovereignty resides in equal measure in the citizens of this country. Finish. <laughs> Eric, so uh, when it comes to the um, <coughs> issues to do with chieftaincy, yes. I, I think that I have a bias. And it's probably because I come from that stock. Yes. And I, I feel that there's still significant contributions that our chieftaincy institution uh, gives this country. I mean, there are some parts of the country where, reg regardless of the fact that we have the, the state, and you have state apparatuses and all of those things, these chiefs actually serve as judge, jury, um, uh, alternative dispute resolution, all sorts of things. Mm. I mean, <coughs> and it's part of our culture. It's, it's, it's nuanced. And it's maybe one of the things that, as far as I'm concerned, we will struggle to, regardless of the Republican um, status that we have, we will struggle to do. I mean, and it's more profound in certain places than, than, than others. I mean, when you come to our urban areas, for example, it is not as projected. But when you go to our rural settings, it's still very significant, and they have a role to play. And I think that uh, the uh, people who put the constitution together also, in their own wisdom, felt that because it's been part of our uh, existence for a very long time, it's something that we need to find a, a, a place for them. Uh, in terms of the equality of persons, I mean, before the law, I think that that is um, a fundamental principle that needs to be uh, acknowledged, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think that, yes, there are certain things that uh, over the period can be added to the whole chieftaincy uh, institution to modernize it and make it fit for purpose as we, as we go along. But I, I, I honestly don't have an aversion towards that. I mean, that would be almost like uh, uh, doing something against my own beliefs. And, and I think that there's a certain, you see, it, it, people don't like to have this conversation, but if we can accept other even cultures and religion and all of those things. I think that we need to respect our traditional uh, religion as well and beliefs as well. And a vast majority of the Ghanaian people do so. And then they hold allegiance to their chiefs and uh, all those people who actually superintend over uh, the various communities that we have in this country. You see, Master, <laughs> there ought to be an empirical basis for whatever we say. Yes. Chieftaincy is not Ghanaian or African. But we, that's, that is a, a traditional. Can, can I finish? I, I, okay, can I all right. Finish? Okay. Chieftaincy is not Ghanaian or African. Chieftaincy is universal. Chieftaincy is a reflection of the state of development. Mm. Huh? Mm. It's, 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 it's a social and economic formation. And if you look at, at the history of the universe and so on, all societies in the universe started as primitive communal societies. And it doesn't matter whether they were African <coughs> or Asian or, or European, all societies started as primitive communal societies. Mm -hmm. Eventually developing to slave societies uh -huh, and eventually then developing to feudal societies. Mm -hmm. So it's a state of development. It is not something which is permanently or inherently African or, or, or European, or whatever. Why? Only last week, the Queen of England was celebrating her, her, her what is it? You understand? Yeah. Of course. Is that not chieftaincy? Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, the King of Belgium visited 
the uh, DR Congo? Is that not chieftaincy? And so on. So this argument about a no, but I don't think that I think that it's, it's a belief that it's a belief system. You understand, and it has nothing to do it with what they say. But it we is have a belief please, system locally. Please, 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 please. Uh -huh. It is universal. Mm -hmm. It is not Ghanaian. It is not African. It is not Asian. It is a universal, you know, system of government. Okay, whether or not mm. in 2022 we should be upholding those traditions as well is another matter. Whether in 2022 we should be insisting that albinos cannot be leaders is a, a matter for consideration. Whether in 2022 we should still be saying that people with scars on their bodies cannot play leadership roles is, is, is the issue. It's not about whether it is African tradition or it's not African tradition. Mm. What is African tradition about chieftaincy? Some people think that if you carry your, 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 your chiefs in palanquin and so on, then, then you're observing tradition. <laughs> there is reason why we used to carry chiefs in palanquins. Why? Chiefs were the generals when we went to war. You understand? Yes. And under, under, under the, 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 what is it, the, the norms of war and so on, if the chief was captured in war, it meant that the, the, the army had been defeated. Mm. So the chiefs were protected. Mm. You didn't want the chief to get too tired, mm. you know, in battle and so mm. on. So the chief didn't walk with the troops. The chief was carried and so on to give him some... In 2022, when the world has developed armored vehicles for the protection of generals and so on, if you are still carrying your, your military generals in Palanquin, you must be... No, but there's a certain symbolism to that. And I think that you can give the Ghanaian people, or whoever, I mean, since you say there's a global uh, phenomenon, you can give them the benefit of that. It's, there's symbolism to that. And I think that... What is the symbolism of carrying is, people in Yeah, but, but the thing is that, you see, we talk, we live in this country and sometimes even have conversation about tourism, for example. Mm. And people travel from all over the world to come and experience the cultural nuances of this country and what we, they, they seem to uh, maybe have missed over a period, right? And so there's some value in maintaining and still basically going ahead with some of these uh, things that we call traditional, right? Of course, I mean, when there are other things, over the Most period, today, over the period, chief is uh, a global uh, phenomenon, even yeah, today. Not, but let me finish. I mean, no, 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 if you go to the United States of America, yes. the original inhabitants still have chiefs. Yes, they yes. Do. They still rule. Yeah, Canada. but so if you go to Canada, the chief institution is still present in Canada. Mm. Australia, if you, everywhere. If you go yes. to England, uh, yes. the head of state no, of but, England yeah, is but the but prince. But people, so nobody is going to come here to see chief People do. People do. People, people, do. people, people, people travel from all over the world to even come and witness funerals. I mean, if you, you're in the media space mm. and what, how we do our marriage ceremonies mm. and mm. all of these things, and they're all. Was traditionally, I mean, I, I have no chance. Let me, let me, let me, let me take a actually, we've yeah. actually come to a, a junction today mm -hmm. where well, your chiefs are wearing tail coats and bowler hats. Let me let me take a break. When I come back, we'll be doing the National Cathedral. So Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablaqua has um, made some revelations of some monies that were transferred as seed money to the Secretariat of the National Cathedral um, when we had been promised that um, state coffers are not going to fund the National Cathedral. Professor Jampu, according to the uh, Insight newspaper, says we should raise funds to make Kolebu free SHS better, not cathedral. And he's saying that to pastors. When we come back from the break, I'll read a bit of that, and I'll give you some details also uh, from the statements and some of the revelations by Honorable Samuel Okujito Ablakwa. And then we'll come back into the discussions. You want to stick and stay with us. We'll be right back. In the first two years, your baby will experience amazing growth in so many ways. To fuel it, they need the right nutrition. With Serilac, one bowl of goodness a day provides the wholesomeness of carefully selected grains. The Iron Plus, which helps support brain development, 
and the yummy taste baby loves, assuring you the right nutrition in one bowl. Cerelac, it's all good, mom. This advert is FDA approved. I'm tired and frustrated. After meeting all our targets, company cannot help us with our health needs. Honestly, huh. honestly. They are not helping us. Something has to be done about this. You see, just yesterday I was at the hospital with my wife. And can you imagine the amount of money being charged? So outrageous. Relax, guys. Just leave everything to me. Today I will do with him accordingly. You have to. I surely will. Today be today. Sir, you want to leave. We are tired. You've been doing everything possible to ensure the success of this organization. But it looks like our health care is not taken into consideration. Am I speaking your mind? Yes, yes you are. And that is not fair. Get a cosmopolitan health insurance for all your employees today and have an easy life. Call us for your package. Okay, guys. You are leaving because I have good news for you. Cosmopolitan health insurance. Providing the highest levels of coverage possible to our clients. My name is Akrobati. People call me who knows tomorrow. I don't want to hide the good things from the good people of Ghana. Let me tell you about watching your favorite kids show, movies, telenovelas, sports, news, etc. and etc. In crystal clear, high definition picture. This year, we know come to play. Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy, Mr. Drew. And I'm going to show you how to pause and rewind live TV. And also program your HD Plus decoder to record shows when you're not home. Eh, uh, middle cut. HD Plus is a game. Tell you, bring your phone maker, download my HD Plus app on it for you so you can watch TV on your phone with free data every month. Burgers for six. Did you say six? Open the app. Ding dong. Bubble. Your favorite moment. Pass your favorite ice cream. Ding dong. Bubble. Eat it. Go on. Order what you want. We be bring anything you want. Ding dong. Global. Order it now. Download the app. Order a global and we will deliver. Ding dong global. Got into the house. Made me put my legs into the shoe. Walked around the compound of the house for about ten minutes. Then he took the shoes from me. Went and washed the shoes. He put them in the chop box. I was not the only one. Yes. Yeah. Almost all my mates. Your mates. The first time they wore shoes was at Pembroke. We call him Prof. So he was teaching even my class. I was he was one year behind me. The teachers would call him to come and teach my class. So they hailed us, even though we were poor, but we still have um her memories. I have three daughters and I see her in them. Now on that morning team. All the ministers in there, they don't change them, they don't move them. But don't let's turn this into a discussion. Then my Rollins told me that I can go and live on top of a tree. I should move out of that house. So I came and told my wife, she said, look, let's move and go and find some top of the tree to live in. Yeah, welcome back from the break. So uh, during the break, you saw a video of Annie and Pofo and uh, their hoist. That's coming up on Good Afternoon Ghana this afternoon. So you want to make time and watch the details of um, that story. But um, you're welcome back. And I told you before we went on the break that we'll be doing the National Cathedral. Professor Jampu uh, has said to the pastors that raise funds to make Kolebu and free SHS better, not the cathedral. He says, uh, well, the story says, a senior political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Professor 
Jampo has called on the clergy at the forefront of raising funds for the construction of the National Cathedral to channel their efforts into raising funds for the betterment of the operations of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in the Greater Accra Region. According to him, it will be important for the Reverend Ministers to channel their efforts into making the hospital better for the people of Ghana rather than raising funds for the construction of a church building. There is the urgent need for those or these pastors at the forefront of raising funds for the construction of the church house to channel these efforts and making some of the governmental government social intervention programs such as free SHS uh, among others in the country, quote and unquote. He argued that the free SHS is one major program that needs the intervention of the clergy as the construction of the cathedral in his view is a misplaced priority. He, he stressed that developing infrastructure over the development of the people is not the way to go. Professor Jampo made this call in reaction to government's decision to finance the construction of the National Cathedral with an amount of 25 million US dollars. So the story is carried by um, uh, the Insight News paper. I, I was looking for the reporter, but I, I'm sure I'll get it later on to put across. And there are revelations here also from um, the Member of Parliament for North Tom Constituency, Honorable Samuel Okuji to Ablaqua. He's put out some documents, which I'm sure Eric you have and uh, Uncle Kwesitu you have. And then he makes a statement. He, sa he says, as promised, here are more calamitous revelations on unconstitutional payments by the Okufuado government purportedly to finance a cathedral project. On the 29th of October 2020, few weeks to the national elections, Ken Oforiata, acting on request by President Okufuado's chief of staff, authorized the release of gargantuan 100 and 42 million 762,500 Ghana cities for the National Cathedral planned activities. It is considerable consternation to note that contrary to legal requirements, government concealed this enormous 142.7 million Ghana cities from parliament as the government deliberately failed to disclose this item as part of their expenditure returns of 2020 during the 2021 budget consideration in Parliament. The 2020 or this 2020 cathedral expenditure was also kept away from the Auditor General in his 2020 audit. So far, adding this latest expose to our previous lease, the Kufuado government has spent a mind-boggling 199,832,603 Ghana cities of taxpayers' funds on a cathedral which was originally presented to Ghanaians as a personal pledge to God that will not divinely or that will not be executed with taxpayers' funds. So I'll end here. This is the import of the whole uh, story. And Eric, you have the document. I'll start this one with you. There is one which comes from the office of the president, and it says, raise seed money for the National Cathedral of Ghana. It explains the transfer or the authorization of the finance minister to transfer $25 million to the National Cathedral Secretariat. Another one also comes in cities. And uh, we thought that money wouldn't come from government or taxpayers' funds. Well, I mean, I, you know, this subject of the National Cathedral uh, has been raving for mm. quite a while. Mm. And um, at the point, I had to go back to... Um, our national, our Ghana national anthem, mm -hmm. right? And I, I, I see a lot of, if you like, um, uh, almost hypocrisy when it comes to some of these conversations, right? So you have a, a nation that starts off with, God bless our homeland, Ghana. And then in one breath, we are supposed to be a secular state, in another breath, uh, we have to eschew anything that has anything to do with religion and all of those things. I believe strongly that government made the position clear. I listened to the uh, deputy finance minister, mm -hmm. uh, John Kuma, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and also read some commentary that has come from him regarding if well and truly. I think that the uh, bone of contention is if uh, indeed was captured in the budget as a line item. Mm. 
and he justified the fact that it was actually uh, captured under the Office of Government Machinery uh, budget and that uh, it was perfectly legal for that uh, money to be spent uh, when it comes to the cathedral. But I also admit, it's, it's one of those things that have been very contentious as to if really, as a country, uh, this is what we, we need. But you see, there's always a, a chicken and egg situation. All those people making the argument that uh, maybe it could go into something else I've also been lost of the fact that, yes, I mean, it's also a project that will provide, again, the same kind of employment, stimulates the economy, it will give jobs to people, and all of those things. And the question becomes a matter of priority if, I mean, at this stage in our life, that's what we should be doing. And again, I, like, for my, my orientation, you still always have to give people that leverage and benefit of that to uh, make up their own minds. I believe that the cathedral serves a certain purpose. It's one of those things that uh, almost anywhere in the world that you go, you have some of these huge uh, monuments that people would gravitate towards. Um, the argument has been made in terms of how it can boost tourism and all sorts of other things and all that. Uh, Again, when people are not convinced by that argument, you can also give them the, uh, the benefits uh, of that. But that's why we are in, in a democracy where sometimes some of these decisions are made and a section of the people are unhappy about it and all of those things. Mm. There are people who have even gone on to make some other arguments that, I mean, from time memorial for as far as I can remember, the state has always tried to play a role in terms of facilitate other um, either things like Hajj and all sorts of other things for other religious groupings and all that. And they feel that there's absolutely nothing wrong with having something of that nature, uh, an edifice of that nature that would also, uh, again, play a significant role with like a certain uh, number of Ghanaian people who are of a, a Christian stock. And I, I feel that, yes, some allegations have been made. Um, then again, it behoves on even the, the finance ministry, for example, to uh, bring some more clarity to the, to, to the matter. And then, I mean, I'm sure that uh, regardless of what I say, regardless of what happens uh, from now, the argument will still rage on. The, the point has been that um Yes, you say it was captured in, line, in a line item. So the second leg of it is that the whole country was made to believe that contributions from well-meaning Ghanaians who believed in the National Cathedral were going to be used to put up the building and the structure. And no money from taxpayers' uh, funds were going to be used. So here we are talking about $25 million. And now there is a justification coming from um, Honorable John Kuma that it was captured in as a line item in, in, in Office of Government Machinery. And that's why I'm saying that because of the divergence, I mean, so I've seen this document. Mm -hmm. uh, I've um, seen the communication that has come from the Finance Ministry mm -hmm. and all of those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is uh, something that cannot be lost. This is, we're talking about $25 million, mm -hmm. right? And so some more clarity should be brought to to bear for you, people would to, you then agree to with, with the number of Ghanaians or the section of Ghanaians that are saying that government outright, outrightly lied to the people of Ghana on this one? No, no, but that's what I'm saying that if you have... And that if you are putting up a cathedral, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be a holy edifice, mm -hmm. and uh, you are not telling us the truth, where, where, where are we heading towards? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that people have their right. Okay, people mm -hmm. have that right. Mm -hmm. And all sorts of arguments have been put forward as mm. to either it's a priority, mm. either well and truly government should even play a role. Mm. Uh, there was an issue with even the land that were allocated and exactly. all of those things and all that. And I'm saying that, you see, when you talk to other persons, they also, you know, when it comes to issues to do with religion, that's why I'm being very... Yes, I get, uh, it. I get uh, it. ...to do with religion. Uh, it's an extremely sensitive matter, mm. right? 
And you have to be extremely careful not to incur the displeasure of a person. And sometimes you need uh, what we call political correctness mm -hmm. when you're commenting on, uh, on issues like that. But if an allegation has been made, right, in terms of something untoward happening or an illegality, mm. then I think that, yes, you have the, the, the institutions in place and the mechanism in place to clarify these allegations. And, I mean, if it's coming from uh, Honorable Ablaka, for example, he's a member of parliament, mm. and there are uh, things that he can activate, even within parliament, right, so that it, it would bring the issues to the fore, right? As to uh, the morality of it and who said what and who has lied and all of those, and I leave that to the uh, discretion of, of the Ghanaian people, and if people feel that uh, something untoward has happened, they will make those determinations. It doesn't lie in my mouth to, to say that. Uh, let me come to you now, Uncle Kwesi, on the, on the priority of the National Cathedral, um, as Professor Jampu is putting across, that we should have prioritized um, other institutions, like the Free SHS and so on and so forth. And then the disclosure coming from Honorable Samuel Okujito Blackwa. Well, I think, first of all, we have to get the figures right. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about $25 million. million. We are actually talking about close to $200 million. That's how much has been released for the national... Uh, 200 million Ghana cities. Ghana cities. That's, Ghana um, cities. Uh, if I have the figures right, 199,832,603. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, so that figure is here. So, so that's what we're talking about. Right. 200 million Ghana cities. And that is way beyond $25 million. Yeah, so that's the figure we're talking right. about. Now, what are the facts? The facts are that soon after his inauguration, the president, the current president of the republic, indicated that he had gone into a pact with God. Mm -hmm. And that he had told God that if God assisted him to become president of the republic, he will reward God with a cathedral. Now that itself has many theological problems. Many theological problems. I don't believe for one moment uh, that God is a card-bearing member of any political party. Mm. I don't believe that. I don't believe for a moment that God accepts bribes or rewards for his actions. You understand? So it has many theological problems as well, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Whatever it is, this is a personal agreement between the president and his God it has nothing to do with me. The president's God may not necessarily be my God. You understand? Mm. The president's religion is not necessarily the religion of the 30 million people of Ghana and so mm -hmm. on. And in fact, there are people who are Christians who actually insist that God does not live in buildings and so on. So that's also another theological question and so on. But the president believes that he can build a house for God. He thinks that God needs a house. So he can build a house for God. That's his own belief. Why should others who do not share that belief contribute to it? Why should anybody be paying uh, mm. for, for a contract, personal, absolutely personal contract between the president and his God? Why should anybody be paying for it? Now, to top that, we were assured that taxpayer resources were not going to be expended on the project. When it turned out the government was making land available for the construction of the project, issues were raised. That if taxpayer resources were not going to be expended on the project, why is government land being released for the project? It turned out that government land which was being released for the project was not even virgin land. In fact, on that land, structures have been erected to accommodate judges, including judges of the Supreme Court and mm -hmm. so on. Some of those houses were less than two years old. They were pulled down. 
And many people saw that as, as waste of, of national resources as well. Be that as it may, the land was given. We were assured that no further resources would be expended by the state on the project. Now here we are with a bill of 200 million Ghana cities, or close to 300 million Ghana cities. How do we justify this? How do we explain it? The government mean it when it told us that state resources will not be expended on it. That's one part of the story. Now, there's another part of the story that these payments were hidden from parliament. Mm -hmm. And under the laws of Ghana, you cannot expend the taxpayers' resources uh, without, without reference to parliament. But these were hidden from parliament. Now, if they were hidden from parliament, they were illegal payments. You understand? Mm. Then I've read the statement which was put out by Honorable Okui Dato Ablakwa, and he's saying that this was done at the blind side of the Auditor General, which means that these accounts are not even audited. That's a huge problem. Spending state money which is not audited is a huge problem, and so on. Now, <clears throat> Hmm. This matter, it's a serious matter, Umasa. Then another issue which has been raised simply has to do uh, mm. with, with, with the values, uh, our values. Three weeks ago, mm, I came across some chap who had a problem, mm, some chap who had a sore. Mm, just an ordinary saw which became infected. And the, the, the infection traveled to the brain, went into the brain. And the person was in a state, you know, a very bad state, mm. and in a private clinic. Now, the doctors in the private clinic clearly warned that they couldn't handle this patient. It was beyond them. So family then had to be looking for hospital bed you know, to facilitate administ uh, admission and so on. Can you believe that the 37 military hospital was full and could not even spare one bed to take care of this critically ill emergency. patient? Emergency. critically ill patient who, who could die. 37 military hospital. Military hospital. Right now, we are being warned about, about Islamic insurgents who are likely to attack us exactly. and, and so on. It is these soldiers who are going to face these Islamic insurgents. If they get injured, if they get into critical condition, the 37 military hospital sometimes doesn't have enough beds, cannot spare one bed for one soldier. Mm -hmm. That's how bad the situation is. The family then tried to get admission at the, at the, at the rich hospital and were told that given the condition of the patient, the patient needed to have dialysis and other things that needed to be in intensive care and so on. Mm. And that rich hospital could not admit these patients. If rich hospital admitted this patient, his, his, his life could not be guaranteed and so on. Master, you know, eventually this patient ends up at the International Maritime Hospital, hospital yes. in, in, in Terma. If I tell you what the family has been through hmm, in these three weeks, Master, you will cry. You will cry. And I'm just imagining uh, an ordinary clerk in the ministries falling into this condition. He would die. She would die. She would die. Anybody who gets into this condition in Ghana, if you cannot cough up about 100,000 Ghana cities, you will die. And how many people can afford 100,000 cities? Another friend of mine's mother uh, was, was in an emergency situation and they took the person to the maritime hospital in Tema, which is supposed to be one of the best hospitals in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You understand? I hear that the facilities there are excellent, the doctors there are specialists and so on. Supposed to be one of the best in the country. I'm told 
that before the woman was admitted, they had to pay a deposit of, is it 30,000 Ghana cities? Mm. Who can afford it? For admission? For admission. Deposits? Yeah, emergency admission, deposit. You understand? Now, today, all of us know that some tests cannot be done, laboratory tests cannot be done in Ghana. They, they go to South Africa. They take your samples and rush it to South Africa. Yes. Which God, which God is sitting in heaven and sees this situation and says that use the money you have to build a house for me so that you can continue taking samples to South Africa? Which God? That must be a very wicked God. That must be a terrible God. Which God sits in heaven and says that, look, if, 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 if you have infection, huh, traveling mm. into your brain and so on, mm. and, and you go to 37 and there's no bed and so on, it is fine. And that the resources you have, use it to build a house for me. Which God is that? What kind of God lives in houses? What kind of God lives in concrete structures and so on? That must be a very strange God. Very, very strange God. You see, sometimes those who claim to be holy, those who claim to be pursuing the interests of God, say things and do things which gives God a bad name. And those who are promoting this cathedral project are actually destroying the image of their God. They are destroying God. They are painting him as an insensitive God. An insensitive God who has no sense of priority. An insensitive God who is egocentric and so on. That's the picture they are painting. And if I were their God... I will be very angry with them. If I were their God, I would be extremely angry with them for destroying my name. If I were their God, my goodness, what I would do to them, they will never forget. They are destroying God. They are destroying the image of God. Let anybody tell me that there is a God, any God, anywhere in the world, who thinks that we should continue sending laboratory samples to South Africa for, 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 for analysis. Because the little money we have, the 200 million Ghana cities we have, he wants it invested in, 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 in a cathedral. What God is that? Master, this is getting out of the way. I'm getting so embarrassed by this development. In any case, those who think that merely by building cathedrals, uh, our society will prosper and so on. They should look at the case of La Côte d'Ivoire. They built the basilica in La Côte d'Ivoire. What happened? There was a civil war. How many people died in that civil war? In spite of the fact that a basilica has been built in La Côte d'Ivoire, look at the state of the uh, 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 economy of La Côte d'Ivoire. Look at the rate of inflation and so on. So cathedrals do not necessarily bring about development. And the earlier we realize that, the better it will be for us. In any case, this cathedral which is being built, mm. hmm, the cornerstone of the cathedral mm. is a stone which was presented by the Israeli ambassador. Mm. Ally, mm. is that not the cornerstone? Mm. An apartheid state, apartheid state, an apartheid state is the state which is giving us the cornerstone for the cathedral. So, God is a supporter of apartheid. Is that it? Stop abusing God. Stop, stop destroying God. All these people, they are just deliberately destroying God and so on. But it's up to them. It is between them and their God. That aspect is between them and their God. But there's an aspect which is between <laughs> them and the taxpayer. The taxpayer is also raising questions about how their monies are being spent. Obviously. So there are two issues. Mm. One issue is between them and their God. And the other issue is between them and the taxpayer and the Ghanaian people. I saw uh, a video clip yes. of Atta Kwabna Kennedy. I yes. don't know if you've seen that video. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. But I, 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 if producer, if we have it once, it's I saw a it. video clip mm -hmm. of Atta Kwabna Kennedy mm -hmm. 
speaking at the at the at the MPP Congress in the USA. Oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. and he says, look, one of the major pledges we made when we were coming into power was to protect the public purse. And he's saying that today, they in the MPP should be answering the question as to whether the public purse is being protected. Is being protected. This is Atakwa Black I've Kennedy. Seen the, I've seen the video. This is not me. This is mm -hmm. Atakwa Black Kennedy, mm -hmm. who actually at one stage was campaign manager for the sitting president. Mm -hmm. Look, it's up to them. <sighs> there, there is this uh, angle. I, I was looking for the story where it is also reported that in five years, it will rake in about $95 million. From where? From, from tourism, as Eric had stated. From, from where? From participants and churches People that are just sitting down slapping the their ties and putting figures out. They're slapping their ties and putting figures out. Eric, let me come to you now. Lots of issues raised by Uncle Kosi. On, on well, I think that I've, I've been very clear with mm. my view on it. And I mean, I was very also honest with the fact that it's one of those things that uh, would always engender some kind of um, debate. Mm -hmm. And um, people would make their argument, the moral argument. Others would make the priority argument. Mm -hmm. And the others will make the, really, the legal argument and all of those things. Uh, they're saying things that sometimes you would leave posterity to be the judge. Well, because it's, 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 the verdict is still out as to its significance and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And it, I have this orientation. But in, the current, in its current state, no, no, when, when I, 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 I have, you see, I, and I address that. I mm -hmm. have this orientation that mm -hmm allows people to prefer their views. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Because that should be the, 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 the principle that any democratic uh, dispensation hinges on. I don't have a problem with that. You understand? And so we can have this debate. I mean, it's like even the earlier conversation about chieftaincy and its relevance and all that. And in as much as you might look at it from a perspective as a different subject. It actually dovetails into some of this conversation. And you see, when you go out and you, you try to have a conversation about this, mm. now it now even starts going into issues to do with religion and uh, views on, and belief systems and all of those things. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And I feel that, I mean, when you want to now even deal with the legal aspect of it, then I mean, I've seen this thing that has been put out by uh, Honorable Ablakwa, right? And I've seen a response from uh, the minister, uh, Deputy Minister of uh, Finance in terms of if well and truly uh, these things were captured in the budget and all of those things, mm -hmm. right? And so these are not things that, you know, sometimes we, we kind of overstretch a lot of these conversations. You know, you can't hide... 25 million dollars or 200 million Ghana cities, if that is the case, to start with, right? Mm. So let's delve into that. Let's bring more clarity to the fore, right? And, but like I said, the debate would, would rage on. It is not something that is going to stop today. And that's why I use the posterity argument that sometimes some of these things would hinge on posterity would, would judge all of us, you know? And you know the argument that is made for the priority as well. I mean, there are all sorts of other things that I feel that people would um, have disagreements with. Mm. You know, so in one breath, mm. you would have people who would express very strong views on certain things that government is doing mm. and would actually be in agreement with that, this particular position. Right? That's why I'm saying that let's leave it. Let's continue the, 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 the conversation. But the reality on the ground is that as we speak, the project itself has commenced, mm. it started. Mm. Some resources, I mean, we, we spoke about the land, has been given out. Some commitment has been made in terms of seed capital and all of those things. Mm. What it means is that, I mean, at this point, we have absolutely no option than to ensure that we, it gets to its, its logical it, conclusion and the fruition of it, right? And what it's meant to do would inure to 
whoever uh, would, mm -hmm. would take advantage of it and all mm -hmm. of those things. And so that is my orientation. And like I said, I admit that, yes, it's still contentious, but uh, posterity would, would be the judge. Well, so that's, that's about it. That's um, on the National Cathedral and um, the revelations made by Honorable Samuel Okujito Abdullah. I'm sure the producer put the story up and um, some of the details that have come up. Almost 200 million uh, Ghana cities, according to the ranking member on foreign affairs in parliament, doled out to the secretariat of the National Cathedral. So we'll, we'll go on. There is a story here which I want to pick, and uh, there is also one on security. But once you are here, um, I think I'll add it to it. Um, NPP is not opening nominations today, and I'm wondering whether you'll be picking your forms today or not. However, Dr. Obedia Samoa believes that NPP cannot read the aid. So I would read a bit of it, and once you pick your, uh, you, you, you talk to us about you picking your forms and the prospects, you would speak to it as well. It says, Dr. Yao Asamoa, a former national chairman of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, has said the governing new patriotic party cannot break the eight even if ghosts vote for the party in December 2024. Now, according to him, the NPP's abysmal performance in government, it will suffer a huge defeat in the 2024 general elections and no amount of political gymnastics will save them. Dr. Ubeda Samoa pointed out that the political mantra of breaking the eight-year rule is an illusion and that even if the NPP resurrect dead bodies to vote for them, they will still lose the 2024 election. In, in his considered view, uh, the owners rather lied on the NDC to win or lose if they fail to do what is right with their internal reorganization to capture how, power. Dr. Samoa made the declaration at the 43rd anniversary celebration of the June 4th uprising at Teshi in Accra. Now, addressing cadets of the revolution and NDC party faithful, as well as traditional leaders, the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General, as well as Foreign Affairs Minister under the Rawlings administration, said the NPP has not got what it takes to break the aid and that such political mantra would not materialize in Ghana. And let me give you this because I'm... Um, Today is the 8th of um, 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 June, and according to the statement from your General Secretary, um, Honorable John Boedu, today begins the process towards the election of national officers for your party. Yes, it's true. I mean, um, the process has been activated. Uh, as you are aware, we've gone through the various stages. We just did our uh, last regional elections uh, over the weekend in the central region mm -hmm. and the national um, elections is actually uh, started basically if you think about the forms being picked today uh, i'm sure that uh, my team are poised and ready to pick up the form uh, today and probably they even are doing so as, as we speak uh, coming to the issue of uh, dr obeda somewhere i mean is he even in the final piece section of that particular statement just points to some inconsistencies you know so in one breath uh, he believes and that's 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 uh, his view and he said that's a considered view so that's you can give him that yet he now goes back and says that the ndc if the ndc itself would have to do what is right to be able to uh, win and all of those things so that's a very inconsistent statement to start with. I believe that a MPP government has a social contract with the people of this country. Mm -hmm. um, nobody is lost on the fact that we will go into the next election on the backdrop of a certain track record. And we believe strongly that our performance and our story would come to the fore when we, we go to the, the, to the general elections. I mean, yes, are we facing challenges as a country? Yes, we are. But this is a, a, a situation that is hinged on some global exigencies that everybody uh, who is being objective would actually uh, acknowledge. But we have a track record. And if that track record is meant to be uh, comparative 
to the NDC. Any day we go into an election, we would emerge favorites, you know. And there are so many factors that goes into uh, winning an election. And to start with, even, even currently, you would, yes, you would exactly. In Listen, Ghana. a united NPP, mm. a party that is united with, with, with behind uh, a certain a common purpose, mm. and that's determined to win an election, with governizing the base mm. and ensuring that the grassroots are uh, up to uh, the, their responsibility and leadership is doing what it's supposed to do. We'll go into any election. I mean, it will be almost, um, if you like, folly on the part of anybody to underestimate a political party like the MPP. You, you understand what I'm, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is not a time to even divulge what the MPP would do in an electoral uh, situation, for mm -hmm. example. But the truth of the matter is that uh, where he's coming from, is coming from a certain subjective standpoint. What were you expecting him to say? You were expecting him to say that the MPP will win the elections? Of course not. So you can do a comparison of him and maybe another elder uh, statesman who is an MPP person, mm -hmm. and he will tell you something totally different. So I would give him that and essentially define that as political talk. I mean, he was talking at the June 4th uh, event, trying to galvanize their base, their base and all of those things. And that's exactly what he would say. But I know, and I believe strongly that if it's based on a competition based on track record and what the MPP has done, I, we would come out victorious. You see, I said this somewhere. We've, we, maybe we haven't learned how to tell our story properly because mm -hmm. we come from a very conservative stock. And sometimes this whole idea of populism and, I mean, extreme propaganda is not something we are very good at. And I'll give you two examples. And I've made this, I've, I've made this clear somewhere. Mm. You see, maybe 20 years ago, um, Agassi was talking about the hospitals and the healthcare system and everything. And there's something that's been significant as a public policy dialect, uh, 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 direction, which is the issue to do the national health insurance. So hitherto, if you're a parent and you had a sick child in the middle of the night, at that time there used to be something called cash and carry. Mm. And a cash and carry means that if the child was that sick and you want to take the child to the hospital, right, uh, you have to even have money to pay for a hospital card. Then came a, a government, a president, Kufour government, that says that we can't allow that to happen in, in a country that has low income and people, uh, sometimes peasant farmers or traders and all of those things. There's a possibility that you'll be at home in the night and you have no money and a child is sick and decided to bring about the national health insurance. And as we speak, as bad as it might seem to certain people, mm. you can discount the benefits. But I'm sure that millions of Ghanaians are appreciative of that particular policy. With all the challenges, you can point out all the challenges, but just do a juxtaposition of a situation where you have to do cash and carry. And now where young people under the age of 18 can actually access public health systems mm. for free. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm. That's a huge, almost a revolution in terms of the public health system, right? Where other African countries are coming here, right, to learn from us. Then, second one, free SHS. Now, again, People who are opponents would discount the free SHS. It's like, oh, the, 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 there's congestion, the food is bad, they're having challenges and all that. Yet, in times past, you have families that for generations on end, when you finish your um, primary education, mm. and, and those are things you call middle school living certificate and GSS and all that, you do not even have the inclination to go to secondary school. Then it comes the president, Akufuado government, that has that conviction and presence of mind that every single Ghanaian child should have an opportunity to go to secondary school, regardless of where you're coming from, regardless of how rich or poor your parents are. Mm. You can discount that as well. 
But some of these kids now would actually emerge, like myself and you and Uncle Kwesi here, and become doctors and presidents and all that. And hitherto, had absolutely no chance. You know, so maybe we don't tell our stories properly. But in reality, and there's so many, there's a plethora of examples that I can give. Yes, of course, this is a, a multi-party democracy. So you would have people who would disagree with me, for example, and even think that the era of uh, 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 cash and carry and the era where kids could not go to secondary school because they had poor parents is better than what is pertaining today. You have those people, right? And I've even said, even when it comes to the education sector and second sector, I said, listen, the issue, some of the things that you read and you, you hear about secondary school education, the boarding school, it used to happen when we were still in school. Mm. The food was bad. That is not a justification that it should not be dealt with. But the issues that you would have even in that space would never be as a result of free SHS. You understand where I'm coming from? So yes, we have a story and so many other examples that I can, I, I can give you. And the Ghanaian people are discerning. Right? Yes, of course, they have a right to disagree with government on certain positions. They have a right to express disquiet when they are unhappy with uh, government or even in terms of uh, calibrating expectations and all of those things. Those are things that we can have a genuine conversation about. But any single day, any day that we go into an election, as a united front, as a political party that is minded by what our vision is and what we stand for and the values and all that, we'll go into an election, I mean, as favorites. You understand? So, yes, we have our own, and that's why we are going through this internal mm -hmm. processes mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and what we present to the Ghanaian people and show empathy and show a certain kind of leadership. And so, I mean, if really, if it wasn't because you invited me to comment <laughs> on, on this, it's like almost like a, a Kotoko and her situation where you're going to play <laughs> a football game. Have you ever, ever, mm -hmm. any consummate football fan, for example, saying that, oh, we are going to play tomorrow and that... Uh, well, when, there, when there are challenges, they accept. Uh, for, yeah, example, but, but for example, I have, for example you yes. talk about um, NHIA, and I'll come to Uncle Kwesi very soon. You talk about free SHS. But currently, there are issues of you campaigning on the fuel prices. Mm -hmm. And we are witnessing the fuel prices. Yeah, but currently. those are things that you see... 11.2, 12.5. Yes, you see, but we have... You campaigned on them. I, and you are going to campaign I, on them. I... Going into the next election, I admit there, there are other things that you can do. I, I have admitted mm -hmm. that there are challenges, there are exigencies, some of them global, some of them environmental, some of them internal, right? And Ghanaian people, the Ghanaian people have every right. And you know my orientation, I'm not going to sit here mm -hmm. and, you know, she have every right to express disquiet and express maybe some disappointment in certain decisions that have been made. Mm. But when you do a certain wholesome, holistic, I mean, analysis of our performance mm. and where we have come from and a certain historical antecedent and a track record, mm. any day when it comes to issues to do it, social intervention policies. Look at what we are doing in the TVET space. I was listening to, uh, I think, Kosi Yankee of GEA, in terms of how many young people have been uh, trained and mm. given support mm. to go into entrepreneurship and all that in almost in every other aspect of our work, what we are doing in the digital space and uh, trying to digitalize the, uh, the economy, uh, bringing financial inclusion. Those are things that, they are tangible things that you can touch. <laughs> you understand? So any day, right, when we go into like your, you know, the hurly belly times of politics and trying to convince the Ghanaian people if we are better managers of the economy. I think that we will do that. That's all. Let me come to you now, Uncle Lukasi, on the same thing. And, uh, <coughs> the issue is very Well, raised. last Friday, mm -hmm. there was a lecture in one of our universities, I think the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, mm -hmm. it was on one of the Akan Accra based radio stations. Mm. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention oh, you, you can go ahead. Peace FM, actually. Right. You, you can go ahead. And uh, he had led a research on, on, on the NPP, mm. I mean, who was likely to emerge victorious in their 
primaries and so on. You've done some comprehensive scientific research. Mm. Now, this research concluded that 25% mm, of the executives of the NPP don't believe that they can break the eight. So it's not Dr. Beda Samuel. 25%. 25% of the executives of MPP believe that this eight cannot be broken. So it's not Dr. Beda Samuel. Within the MPP itself, those who are going to campaign for the party. And this is not about just ordinary members of the party. Executives. Or sympathizers of the party. Executives, 25% of them, believe firmly that they cannot break the eight. So it's not a statement which can be taken lightly. And so on. Now, why do people vote in elections? Mm. People vote in elections because they have confidence in the political establishment because they believe that politicians make promises and they keep the promises. If you look at <coughs> the political space in Ghana, mm. there's no doubt that you can come to the conclusion that politicians don't mean what they say in elections. The evidence is all over and I'm not going to repeat that. Mm. You know, that there's a huge deficit of trust. And so that exists. Now, you want to talk about the state of the Ghanaian economy? We have said it, everybody is tired. Everybody knows the state of the Ghanaian economy today, the rate of inflation. Mm. For example, if you use that as an indicator, it's... 23% uh, currently. No, there is, there, there's a professor in an American university mm. who has also come up to dispute the 23%. Even the 23%. Yes, and he's saying that the real rate of inflation in Ghana today is around 45%. You understand? How he did his calculation, I don't know. But, but, but there are some who seriously dispute the current rate of inflation. One thing we all do know, all of us, all three of us sitting on the platform today know, is the fact of escalating prices. And in fact, if you look at the report which was presented by the government statistician, not me. Yes. And I saw it last week. Yes. If you take the northern regions alone, food prices have gone up by about 30% as at April. Mm. That's the official statistics, not my statistics. Now, if you look at reports in the media, some food prices have actually risen beyond 400% within the last two years. Mm. And the example I like to give all the time is the price of kinky. <laughs> Let's go out there and buy kinky and you know what has happened. First of all, the size of the ball has reduced and the price has shot up. So kenke, which you used to buy for one city, is now in some places going for four cities. Mm -hmm. And even then, the size of the kenke has reduced. So these are daily things that we all experience. And all of these things will shape our collective attitude towards the elections and so on. You mentioned petroleum prices. It's going to be an issue in the next election. You can't run away from it. Petroleum mm. prices is going to be an issue in the next election. Mm. This morning, I was going through the newspapers, mm. and I saw a statement which had been made by Davi Amma. Yes. And, and I hope all of you know Davi Amma, who is one of the very staunch supporters of the new patriotic party. And she's saying that the monetization of politics, especially in their primaries and so on, will do the party irreparable damage. This is from Davi Amao. Davi Amma. It's not from me. It is Davi Amma who is warning you that the way you are spreading money in your primaries, it can have some very devastating consequences for you in the next elections. I'm not a prophet. Just an ordinary journalist who has been invited by Metro TV to join Eric this morning to review <laughs> newspapers. I have nothing more to say. Right, so can I go on? Yes, sir. Right, so uh, there is this um, uh, video um, of a shooting. We'll, we'll pick that briefly. You want to show that video? You want to show that video? Which one is that? Uh, shooting at Zamama. There are so, many videos, <laughs> there are so many videos of involving the soldier. I, I, I don't know no, which one you're talking it, about. Oh, okay, okay. I, I thought it was not, not the Nigerian, Nigerian one. Okay. So this one, um, and I'll, I'll read a bit of it. So the police 
um, have put out a press release on this one. It says six persons have been injured. And uh, police have arrested and taken into custody a soldier, Sergeant Isaac Abbey, and two other persons, Godfrey Amebo and Ofe Dakun, for their alleged involvement in a shooting incident on a disputed piece of land at Zamrama Line, the suburb of Accra, on the 4th of June, 2022. Now, suspect Sergeant Isaac Abbey allegedly shot and injured four people on the third piece of land. The victims, Ali Ashilili, Akim Zibu, Salam Musa, and Faisal Khan Azuma, who sustained various degrees of gunshots, were sent to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital for treatment. Two of the arrested persons suspected or suspects, Godfred Angwebo and Ofe Dakun, who were posing as soldiers, also sustained some injuries and were sent to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital for treatment. In their statements to the police, the two claimed to be military personnel, but the claim has not been established by the ongoing investigations. Investigations are ongoing and all the suspects will be taken through the due process of law. We are grateful to members of the community for their support. To Pretendant Juliana Obin, Head Public Affairs Unit, uh, Ashanti, this is AR, I, I'm not sure this is uh, Ashanti region, but the, it's coming from the Public Affairs Unit of the Ghana Police Service. And uh, it looks like we're having security problems every day. Let me, one minute each and then I would, I would run. Uh, First of all, the police only this week or late last week issued mm -hmm. a statement yes. saying that their public relations outfit mm -hmm. in the regions would no longer be issuing statements. Unless it is from the national. Exactly. Now you have a situation where head of public relations unit AR, that's Accra, Accra, Accra yes. is issuing a statement. So what happened to the directive which came from the police headquarters? That's my worry. Mm. Now, I am very, very deeply worried by this development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we are being told by the National Security Secretariat and the Ministry of National Security mm. that some insurgents you know, are trying to destabilize the country and yes, so that we yes. should be on the lookout and all. Yes. And we have a situation where Non soldiers are actually wearing able military to pose uniform. as military. People. They are wearing military uniform, full military uniform, carrying rifles on our streets. This is close to a Magadon. What else can, can this be? People who are not soldiers in full military uniform, battle dress, mm. with AK 47s, terrorizing communities and so on. I think that this matter should be looked at very seriously. And, and I am concerned about this, and I, I raise yes, the I mean, issue of... And there's um, there seven land guards all over the place. We're yes. hearing stories of people in military uniform mm. serving as land guards mm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. The Ghana Armed Forces, soldiers themselves, should be interested in stopping this nonsense. Because, you see, these people who are not soldiers... They go about with AK-47 in military uniforms and so on. And terrorize people. Terrorizing people, shooting them. And this, you know, engenders hatred for soldiers. So everybody thinks that soldiers are reckless. Soldiers are abusing our rights and so on. Soldiers are taking the flag for some useless vigilante elements. And the soldiers themselves should be interested in but stopping this that's, that's controlled this by our security system. I, and I'm concerned about this how, because how are they yesterday, doing? yesterday... I got a call from someone who got arrested by people who had guns and were in uniforms, police uniforms. And eventually when they knew that he knows a journalist and he had made a call and we had started making calls all around, they disappeared. And nobody knows where they are now. It's a very serious matter. People in military uniforms with AK-47s terrorizing people in the community. That's a serious matter, and the armed forces should take this seriously. Okay, so I think mm. that, I mean, <laughs> maybe I'm looking at this thing from a different perspective. Mm. It's unfortunate that um, uh, persons are reportedly uh, injured uh, because of this particular incident. 
But what for me it's refreshing is that the police have basically, as we speak, um, apprehended the alleged uh, culprit. Is that not the case? Mm -hmm. And they did that with like uh, dispatch in earnest, and those persons are in police custody, and investigation is ongoing. Uh, I think in their own uh, statement, they're saying that these persons were posing as uh, military personnel, and they've been able to, with the help of the community, apprehend these uh, persons. They are and handed by people from the community are handed over to the police. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so again, but I think that it's the support of the the communities, right? So I think that is a good thing for us to get to the point where these persons are uh, in police custody and the police are basically uh, doing their investigations and investigations are ongoing like they said. Um, yes, it can be worrying, but one of the things that I like about this new police administration is mm -hmm. that uh, they're very uh, proactive when it comes to some of these things. Um, I, I, I didn't see the release that suggested that um, it should come from, the, should national come from the national office. I have been seeing it, yeah, but I mean, uh, there's no way that I would doubt that uh, what he's saying is true. Mm -hmm. But again, once these investigations are made and they come to a certain conclusion, I think that the areas where I have a challenge with these kind of uh, investigations is that sometimes it's lost on us. I mean, we don't really mm -hmm. get to know what the outcome mm -hmm. is. And it's imperative that we do. So that one, it would put the minds of people at rest, and it, and it, would, it would deter bring, other people, it would deter want, other to people who want to get to it. So even when it happens that these allegations are, are founded and uh, some actions are taken, I think that it behoves on the police uh, authorities to also uh, give it the same amount of prominence so that it doesn't create the impression that uh, uh, nothing has been done. Okay, so let me, let me go on to some text messages that I have here. And this one is coming in from Kojo Chum Boafo. Uh, Kojo says, Good morning, Kwesi. This nonsensical cathedral is a coup for those personal covenant with God. That means he should have used his own land and his own money. money. Indeed, he wanted to run for elections the third time. He sold his family land on the ring road to oh, finance his campaign. That land now houses the Society General Bank. Why didn't he donate that land for his covenant with God? Eric should not change the focus of the conversation. Those payments made to the architect were illegal. They were in contravention of the Procurement Act because even the architect was not registered to practice in Ghana. The subsequent payments made to the contractors were illegal because they were not subjected to parliamentary approval. That's it. The payments are in contravention of the PFMA. Simple. Because he tell, uh, yes, Eric, tell your story. The story of phlegmatic corrupt and disregard for the law and lay down procedures that have been time tested. Because in any case, if Ghanaians wanted a national cathedral, why has the short code provided for the contributions not yielded the funds? So that's coming in from Honorable Kojo Chum Guafo. Uh, Fred Abenyo says this one. Fred Abenyo says, Kwesi, I don't blame the old man Akufado for that uh, useless exercise called National Cathedral Project. Rather, those two called men of God who are arguing or urging them, urging him on, a congregation of visionless and clueless people who are they deceiving. They go about consulting juju men and malams and come into public to say they are building a house of God. Which God? Fred Agbenyo sent in that one. And uh, Sir Obama in Pukwasi says, I'll round up with this one. Maybe, just maybe, it's about time extraction and for that matter, Article 71 was expunged from the 1992 Constitution so we can all be spared of the grand hypocrisy and cheap populism in this country. For anybody to think that Togbe Afede's letter presupposes that other members of the Council of State were accepted who accepted this gracia have committed a crime against the state is beyond human comprehension. On the NPP's upcoming national executive elections, it's my fervent hope and prayer that delegates re elect John Bodu as General Secretary, Stephen Intim as the National Chairman, Collins and Nyama CNN as a National Treasurer, and Nanabi as National Organizer. Sir Obama in Pukwasi sent in that one. 
Um, our time is up, but a uh, quick one. Alaji Hamza Pick Farm says, In my humble opinion, Toby Afede has done nothing wrong to deserve these attacks and insults coming from communicators and functionaries of the NPP. I expect other senior citizens to emulate him because Ghana at the moment is going through hard times. We are told by government to sacrifice because uh, they, it's not their money. So what is wrong if Toby Afede has taken the lead to do so or to do that? Remember, this is not the first time the king is being attacked by functionary, functionaries of the MPP. It is becoming one too many. But and the earlier... The house itself allows that mm -hmm. because of the hardships, ministers and other public functionaries and so on, we're going to get rid of some of their privileges. Exactly. So exactly. Fewer, fewer prices. How, how fewer, is that different from fewer fewer the as, as, well as so has Today done. is um, Honorable John Ginapo, uh, Ginapo's birthday. And from the entire team here at Metro TV, we say a happy birthday to you um you have served uh, your country very well and uh, there is a, a message from a very special person for you why are you wasting the happy birthday <laughs> on john Ginapo? what has he uh, done to announce his birthday he hasn't done anything to announce his birthday you are here wasting a little time on john Ginapo's birthday what is that this one is from his junior brother it says Happy birthday to the God of Energy Sector. Honorable John Jidapo, I love you now and forever. My father, brother, and boss. From your junior brother, RCO Malik Basin Tali. Um, that's it. They should what? stop wasting our time. They should <laughs> manifest <laughs> their birthday. Problem. Stop <laughs> wasting our, our, our time. I'm sure you will just wish him. You, you wish no, him. No, I, I, I don't wish him. You don't want to wish him. Right, so we'll come back to Starboy on the Good Morning Ghana. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you hopeful about Ghana? I cannot afford not to Is it just hopeful. because you are Ghanaian? There's too much going for Ghana for mm -hmm. it not to work. Ghana is not a poor country. And why do you say that? We are a poorly managed country. Lifestyle, the way and manner a people live, their politics, way of governance, social cultural lifestyle, health habits, and everything that comes with it. Lifestyle with Rosie is a show about Ghana and for Ghana. Is there something like an ideal time for a woman to have a child? Early 20s. No, Doc, you agree the, with the, me? The time they are telling you, don't be, uh, that is the time that your body says, yes, this is the best time. Interesting. Are people taking more mortgage? Or people are self-building their homes still as it's been? Vast number of people still out there that are buying the land. Unfortunately, some people actually pass away and that building never gets completed. But yeah. you can also die, die through <laughs> paying mortgages. Eh? Well, sorry. there's a way to go uh, around that anyway, okay. so you're coming. Right. We'll yeah. Ghana is for us. If we don't talk about our issues and highlight our challenges and find solutions to them, who will? Lifestyle with Rosie is here to bring you all the intricate conversations of nation building on health and all the complexities of life that we find difficult to talk about as a people. Hi, my name is Rosie and I'm your host on this show. There are no limits to what to expect. It's educative, informative, thought-provoking and very exciting. And oh yes, I can't wait to spend time with you Saturdays at 6 p.m. Make a day. Are you tired as a consumer in Ghana when it comes to issues that confront you as a consumer? Worry no more. Kofi Capito, I'm here to give you the information all that you need to make sure that your right is protected as a consumer. We have too many laws and agencies that should protect the right of the consumer. I'm here to give you the information that will help and assist you to get goods and services delivered to you without any worries. Watch The Capito Show on Metro TV.
You welcome back from the break. This is still good morning, Ghana. And obviously, I have here in the studio the Star Boy. And uh, this is GMG Trend. Star Boy. Come on. Charlie. We thought Jesus was coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey. The National then, Cathedral, eh? Oh, the National Cathedral. Yesterday, there was Jesus training also. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Nathaniel Bassi. Yeah. I, I posted myself. Oh, so. yeah. I don't want to post it to last last I posted because like you know we, 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 we I mean so far as we need to uh, yeah, you know yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. so we're going to talk about that uh, talk about uh, what you're saying about the show this morning so let's get right into it let's begin with your comments mm -hmm. on good morning and always you can join in on Twitter with the hashtag good morning and this one says after the taxpayers money is used to build the National Cathedral use the <laughs> <laughs> or, or us, the Muslim believers, who demand for a national shrine because we also pay taxes. Ebe, <laughs> Lord Ragnar, Akufado's God that is using state money to build a house for should turn him into Mama. Oh, by you. This one says that the economic situation is in dire straits. And uh, okay, so there you have this one says that uh, that's 15 years of a government worker who collects 2000 a month. Who told you government doesn't have money? They share it amongst themselves. Okay. That's uh, someone's tweet coming in. But you can always join with the hashtag Good Morning Ghana. Or you can tweet at Metro TV or tweet at me, Desi Faden, on Twitter. Let's move and talk about Tema to me Because yesterday something happened. If Yashwas Nega did some, some things. That's, that's mad, eh? Charlie, so people are, asking, people are asking this morning that's, if that's, he's okay. I saw the video, you know. Really? Some of these things, we know they talk and plenty. If yeah. you go talk, they go go tell. I mean, you become the third person. So let's... Let's look, look at the tweet. Okay, this one says that Chema won to me versus a fiasco digger. First, it was a fiasco digger and delay. Hey, a fiasco digger adding. <laughs> That's scary too, is it? And Bravi says, why are you all checking up on Chema to me this morning? Chale, people say they are checking out to see if he's fine, who? <laughs> because what happened yesterday, dear? And uh, Morris and Paul is also part. Someone says Chema to me is the richest man in Accra. Hey, I don't know about that, though. And hello, my friend Chema to me. How are you? So everybody is looking forward to hearing him uh, speak to my own to me. Please, we need to, to hear you talk so that your people can be okay. Now, Jesus was training yesterday. I'm sure that on your status, you saw, ah, all of a sudden, around 6 p.m., this was on everybody's status. I thought that the word was coming to an end because Jesus was at the <laughs> But yeah, uh, I mean, uh, it was just believers. Uh, Nathaniel Bassi posted that and everybody wanted to share in that that is why jesus was trending if you were caught up in there yeah that is why jesus was trending yesterday let me wrap up with a special special birthday message to the wife of our news editor bright and alpha his wife um afwa in kone alpha today is her birthday happy happy birthday uh, to you god richly bless you uh, let's yeah. let's let's be asking bright um, uh, we are live on on tv let's yeah. ask him what's happening today and uh, whether we can partake in it uh was good morning was <laughs> this one, i'm asking for chamaro chaman says will there be anything so that we can prepare for the day after you know right right is one of the people who trained me in news and uh, okay. uh when i when i started i think in 2009 or so mm. thereabouts way back in the two yeah so bright is my boss yeah uh, so and, happy and birthday mrs happy mrs Amphor. his wife yeah. is celebrating her God birthday you bless you. Um, on yeah. that note and a, a very special one also to Reverend Mrs. Dura Taki Yaboy, the first lady of Victory Bible Churches International. You are 60 years today from your husband, uh, the general overseer of Victory Bible Church International, Bishop N.A. Taki Yaboy, from um, the entire church, from myself, Kwesi uh, Afriye here at Metro TV, and from the entire crew, we say a special 60th birthday to you. Happy anniversary. And may the blessings of the Lord be upon you, Mommy. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday to yeah. you. I, I saw, I saw uh, Bishop's uh, message on Facebook. Uh, hey, Charlie, this it was solid. It was solid. It was solid. 60 years is not easy. <laughs> it was, it was very was, solid. Tornado's wife is amazing. But the easy Tornado sends some simple <laughs> message. <laughs> to make you rich. Right, so um, that's, that's Starboy for trend. you. Thank you very much, Starboy. Uh, my name is Kosi I obviously sat in for my boss, Dr. Randy Abbey. And this has been Good Morning Ghana. Thank you very much for all the messages that you brought in. We are here tomorrow for you, for God and country. Good morning.
Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments. Brought into the house, made me put my 